The second law is the law of influence. And the law of influence says the true measure of leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. I love this law, and when I teach it, I find um, sometimes it throws an emotional curve to people. Let me explain to you what I mean. You see, the law of influence says leadership is, is influence, nothing more, nothing less. I find most people want to attach other definitions to leadership. They want to say things like, John, I think leadership is title. And by the way, I have a leadership title. Or I think leadership is position. And by the way, I have a leadership position. I find that a lot of people want to tie all kinds of definitions into leadership. But let me just tell you, leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. Let me explain it this way. The person with the most influence at any given time, for any given reason, in any given group, is the leader of the pack. Now, what that means is there are times when influence changes. There's times when one person will have more influence than another, but when you get onto another issue or another subject, that another person may, that, that leadership may shift a little bit because we are not all strong in all areas. And so therefore, when I'm talking about leadership as influence, what it shows is there's a fluidness of leadership and that leadership doesn't always stay with one person. In fact, let me give you a perfect example of this. As we study together the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, one of the first things you're going to realize is this. You do not do well in all 21 laws. Okay? And for those that are in the studio today, I just want you to know, you won't do well on all 21 laws. Now, here's what's going to happen. As you evaluate yourself on each law, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have a tendency to think that um, <laughs> when you do well on a law, you're going to say to yourself, now that is a true law of leadership. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, John's right on there. Oh, that is so good. He's just, that's, that's, that is true. And, and, and on the laws that you don't do so well, you're going to say, ah, that may not be a law of leadership. <laughs> now what you're going to find is you're going to do well on some laws, you're going to not do well on some laws. Hey, that's the way it is. In fact, there are going to be some laws, I'll point them out to you, that I don't do well on. Now here's what I want you to see. That's why it's important for you not only to understand leadership, but that's why it's important for you to have a leadership team. That's why it's important for you to train leaders around you. And here's why. In fact, I have seen over the last three decades, in the 80s, I saw that the great word was management. Everybody talked about management. Peter Drucker did some great things on management. And when we got to the 90s, the, 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 in corporate America, it changed from management to leadership. Now, there's a reason for that. See, managers assume things will always stay the same. Leaders assume things will always change. And so in the 80s, when things were stable, Wow, we needed managers to kind of control and to make sure everything was, everything was being taken care of. In the 90s, when we got to leadership, all of a sudden it drastically changed. And we needed guys and, and, and gals and men and women that, that were fast-paced and, and could change and, 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 and embrace change. And I can tell you, as now we've entered into a whole new century, I can promise you we've gone from management in the 80s, to leadership of the 90s, to now, I can tell you, we're going, as, we, as we've entered in a whole new, not only decade, but a whole new century, we're going now to team leadership. And the reason we're going to team leadership is because the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership will teach you and me, very simply, that you just don't do all 21 things well. You don't, I don't. Now, the moment we understand that, I've got to have a leadership team. And the reason that I have to have a leadership team is because I need people around me that can absolutely make up for my weaknesses and can compliment me. Does that make sense? So, for example, as we're teaching through here, here's what I want you to see. As I walk down here and just kind of use maybe my front row for an example, because this will work. Let's say, let's say, for example, this is my leadership team. My name's John. What's your name? Chuck Ramsey. Okay, Chuck. Perfect. Let's say, let's say we're in one of the laws, and let's say Chuck does a better job at one of the laws than I do. One of the reasons we need to know, evaluate ourselves, and one of the reasons we, we need to have a leadership team around us it's because we all need to know that if I get to the law of navigation, by the way, that's a law I'll teach later on, that's a law I'm weak in. I'm not a good navigator. What I have to realize is, but let's say Chuck is a, I'm a, I'm a, what am I, I'm a two as a navigator, okay? I mean, just trust me, you don't want me to navigate. I'm, okay, I'm kind of like Mr. Magoo, okay, so you don't want that. You don't, you don't want Mr. Magoo running the, running, the, running the ship. Now, but Chuck, let's say he's a nine. What that means is when we get to something in our organization that requires navigating, what we do is I take, and, and now Chuck has more influence. Because if you know Chuck's a better navigator than me, who are you going to follow? See, for too long, 
We've said, follow me because I have the position. How ridiculous. Follow me because I have the title. I'm the president. I'm, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm the one that's over everybody. Follow me. That's not a good reason to follow somebody. You ought to follow a person because they're competent. You ought to follow a person because they're best. And the secure leaders, and I'll talk about the law of empowerment. That's another law. But the secure leaders look around and say, look, gang, let me tell you something. Chuck's a better navigator than me. So when it comes to navigating the day-to-day -day process, and we've got to navigate maybe for a three, six-month period on something, some issue in the organization, Chuck's going to have the ball, and I'm going to follow Chuck. Because all great leaders are not only leaders. They're great followers because they appreciate the value that true leadership brings. Does that make sense? Yeah. So leadership is influence. I may have influence in some areas. Chuck will have influence in other areas. What's your name? Bridget. Bridget will have influence. In other words, the person that is the best leader should have the most influence in that given area. Make sense? Yeah. So look around you and ask yourself, who is influential and in what areas are they influential? That's why, that's why, Several years ago, I designed a way for people to understand influence as it pertains to leadership that would make sense to them. And in your notes, if you'll take just a moment for me, I want to draw your attention to the five levels of leadership. And when I use the word leadership, I could use the word influence. I use them interchangeably. And what I want to do is I want to walk you through this because this is essential for you to understand where you are as far as what level of influence you have and where you should go to increase your influence level. For example, let's go down to the very bottom step, okay? On that first lowest level, put the word position. Now, that's the lowest level of influence, that's the lowest level of leadership. In other words, when you and I go to an organization, we get a title, we get a position. Now, right inside that step is another blank. I encourage you to put the word rights because that's the key word when you're on the position level of leadership. Let me explain. When you and I have a title, when you and I have a position, we get certain rights that come with the position. Is that true? They'll look at you and say, you're going to be over these six people. This is going to be your department. These are your, your people that you're responsible for. Okay, okay. In other words, at level number one, people follow you because they have to. In other words, people say, uh, why are you following that person? Well, it's because they're the boss. They're the leader. I have to. In other words, I'm under them. I really don't have any choice. Now, let me share something with you. Every one of us in this studio, every one of, uh, of you that, that watch me do the leadership training, anybody that's, that's, that's just observing what I'm saying right now and understanding these levels of leadership, every one of us have had to follow people that weren't good leaders. Isn't that true? How many of you just, we don't need to call out names, okay, let's not get personal here. How many of you have at one time in your business life or your work life had to follow somebody and they were just a lousy leader? Huh? I mean, that's absolute go. That's, that's 100% in the studio. How, let me ask you this question. How many of you are sitting beside that person right now? <laughs> don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. The first question is a leadership question. The second question is an IQ question, okay? Don't, don't, do, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't raise your hand on the second one. That, that, would not be a good, that would not be a good thing, okay? Now, here's what I'm saying. Everyone else have had to follow people that were not good leaders. Why? Because they had the position and title. This year, I'm going to be speaking to the West Point. I'm coming in for two and a half days. I'm going to be speaking to all the cadets. I'm going to be speaking to the leadership. And they want me to talk about the 21 interview to balls of leadership because they teach it there. What's interesting is my challenge as I go to West Point will be I'm going to teach the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, and so much of the service area is based on rank. And what they're going to have to understand, and what I'm going to do my best to teach them, of course, they're very, very sharp, so they're going to understand it very quickly, probably much better than I ever could, is they're going to have to understand that just because people follow you because you have a position doesn't mean that you're a great leader. Does that make sense? Level number two is the permission level. Let me walk you through the rest of these very quickly. And the key word on the inside of level number two is relationships. At level number two, people follow you because they want to. By the way, just stop for a moment and look at your notes. There's a world of difference between one and two. In step number one, people follow you because they have to. In step number two, people follow you because they want to, because now you've developed relationships with them. Level number three is the production level. And the key word is results. 
Basically, what I'm saying at level number three is this. At level number three, people follow you because of what you've done for the organization. In other words, it's growing. Uh, the profit's better. Uh, the morale is higher. Okay, now all of a sudden people are following you because you've been successful in the organization. That's level three. Level number four is the people development level. That's always my goal. When we talk about a couple of the laws of, of leadership, I'll talk more about people development. But at people development, the key word is reproduction. Oh, yes. People follow you there because of what you have done for them. What you have done for them as individuals. In other words, on level number three, they follow you because of results and what you've done for the company. At level number four, they follow you because of what you have done for them. Now they're personally growing. Now they can say, I'm a better person. I'm, a, I'm, I'm more effective in my job because you've equipped them, you've given them tools in the last level. Is what I call the personhood level. And the key word there is respect. And basically, you have done it so well with so many people for so long that people just automatically put you up there. So it's, it's a wonderful level to be on. And I would encourage you on law number two just to take some time and, and look at the questions and ask yourself questions about influence and how you can more effectively influence others. The five levels of leadership, which is a, which is a lecture in itself, has, a, has its own training video because I spend a great deal of time really helping people work through those five laws. But for right now, the law of influence says there are five levels of influence and you need to know where you are because leadership is influence nothing more, nothing less.